Whether you're embracing artificial intelligence as a helping hand or terrified it's going to steal your job and turn on you, it's clear technology in this space is moving rapidly and from all we can tell, it's here to stay. We sit on the more curious end of this spectrum and have been testing various AI tools for photography as it has come out. We're most interested in how AI can give us back our time and speed up our workflow. We've tested a few different AI-based platforms to post-production and for now we have landed on Aftershoot AI. Picture this. You've just arrived home from a wedding, only to be faced with the daunting task of sifting through thousands of photos. It's time consuming, tedious, and frankly, not the most exciting part of photography. That's where Aftershoot comes in. This AI powered tool promises to transform the way you cull and edit your photos, saving you time and reducing decision fatigue. But is it really as good as it sounds? In this in-depth review, I'll take you through our post-production workflow where I put Aftershoot to the test and give you my honest opinion on whether it's worth the investment. Let's jump in with a style shoot we photographed on the weekend where we shot approximately 1400 photos. Okay, so first things first, we need to open up Aftershoot and we're gonna create a new album. Go start culling, then add a folder. And then we just navigate to where we have the, uh, the shoot that we want to cull. We're going to do this one, the old dairy, and then import from this folder. Okay, cool. So Aftershoot is just reading all the images. You can see by this rainbow up here. All right. So it's had a bit of a look and we're going to hit start culling down in the bottom right. Then we can choose what type of shot. Um, this is actually a wedding styled shoot, um, but we'll just go weddings and engagements. Uh, now these are the preferences that we have found work best for us. Um, often we've already chosen previews, so we'll untick this overwrite existing colors and stars. Um, and because we're with weddings, we're shooting a lot. Um, we really want to narrow down our criteria. So we're choosing a strict threshold for blurred photos. Um, we're doing a loose grouping of duplicates. So that will also end up like bringing a lot more images, um, into a group. Uh, so it's choosing the best of many rather than um, only choosing exactly like almost identical images. All right, and then similar with selections in each duplicate set, we want it to be choosing less rather than more. Um, we could be using this highlights feature. Um, I tend to just choose uh, the highlights uh, myself, but you could definitely use this. Um, and I have, have tried it in the past as well. Uh, and then we hit start culling. So a few things to keep in mind, depending on your computer and how many photos, the initial aftershoot cull may only take a few minutes or close to an hour. For us, a recent wedding with 5,383 images took one hour, nine minutes for aftershoot to select 1,649 images on our two-year-old iMac. You can choose how much power aftershoot uses. I tend to keep it at the default medium setting. For my computer, this means I can easily do emails while aftershoot is working in the background, but my computer may start to lag if I'm editing in Lightroom or Photoshop at the same time. I don't find this to be an issue as there are plenty of other tasks I can do while aftershoot is working. And I will often get aftershoot going when I'm ready for a lunch break. You could do the same before you go to bed and then wake up and your photo session is culled. All right, so Aftershoot has um, done its thing and we can see it has culled it in 18 minutes and 34 seconds. So pretty good. So we just had a nice break and now we can jump back in. Um, and we can see that Aftershoot has selected 500. Uh, now that's uh, too many <laughs> for me, um, but today we're actually just going to select some highlights. Uh, so I love this new feature that Aftershoot has recently added that we can toggle on. It's called My Selections, um, and it just means that we can positively uh, cull, which is my preference. So instead of like choosing what we don't want, we're only choosing what we do want. Um, and for me, that's a, a good, um, good process for my brain. Um, and yeah, so now we are going to uh, just go through and select. Uh, we actually just need like 10 to 20 highlights. So we've got my selections turned on, then we can click the selected. So Aftershoot is just showing us what it thinks is the best. Okay, so we're just gonna have a quick look through and see what Aftershoot has selected. Uh, double click an image to bring it up into this window. And then we can use the left and right arrows to go through. Um, and I'm gonna hit D uh, to add a photo to my selections. So we'll uh, hit D for this one. And we're just gonna keep going through and adding the ones that we want. So we're in this sort of grid view 
and you can see the plus four. So that means that Aftershoot has, has found four images, or actually a total of five, including the one it's selected, that are all quite similar. And so it's chosen this one, but we can use the up and down arrows again to decide if that is our preference. And yeah, I mean, I feel like Aftershoot has chosen the best one here. So yeah, we're just gonna go through and select a few. So that's how I would go through all the images if I was culling this whole shoot right now. As previously mentioned, you move through images in Aftershoot using the left and right arrows and use the up and down arrows to check the other images it has grouped together. You can also hit S to swap the current image with the one Aftershoot selected or A to simply add it to the selects. Okay, so we've gone through and quickly chosen 55, uh, just quick highlights. We're gonna hit this save changes button. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is export to Lightroom. So we just hit export 55 photos. Uh, you've got a couple of options here, depending on what um, editing software you prefer to use. Uh, we're just gonna jump into Lightroom Classic. Uh, now you do already need to have a Lightroom catalog built for uh, the shoot that you wanna edit. Um, so, and that was the last one we had open, which was perfect. So it's just gonna automatically do that. Uh, so we're just importing these photos into Lightroom. What I like about Aftershoot is that I'm still making the final call for the images selected. Aftershoot has simply done the first pass for me to relieve some of the decision fatigue. Now to editing. An AI profile can be created from as few as 2,500 images, but the more data you give Aftershoot, presumably the more accurate, as the AI learns how you like to edit a variety of lighting scenarios. To create our signature style editing profile, I uploaded five Lightroom catalogs of weddings I had already edited and let Aftershoot analyze them. This process took a couple of hours, but was pretty straightforward. I have continued to upload catalogs after I have edited them to keep training the AI. Okay, so we've just closed Lightroom and now we're jumping back into Aftershoot. Um, and now we go back to this same folder uh, and we're going to hit this little artist palette, which is start editing. And then we're gonna choose from recent. So choose and just this last catalog that we had open, add. And then we go continue. Uh, you can choose, so we're choosing our, um, our own preset or our own editing profile that we've created. I've just called it signature style. This is where you would select um, your AI profile. And then you can also ask the AI to crop and straighten. Um, I have used probably more the straighten adjustment more than the crop, uh, just because I don't tend to crop too much or I'm just quite selective when cropping. But yeah, you can just leave those blank if you prefer to do those yourself. And then we'll hit continue. Now this is where we're gonna select what what images we want edited. We're gonna select this catalog and we just want everything edited. So there should be 55 photos. It's saying edited 55 photos. So then we hit edit. Now this process um, is super fast. Um, as you can see, this is real time and it's it's almost done 55 photos. Um, that's, I mean, that's not a whole lot anyway, but um, yeah, it's just a very quick process and yeah, it really just does that first initial edit for me, um, applies the preset, does some exposure and white balance tweaking, trying to get it, um, trying to match the way it thinks that I would edit. And so it's all done. <laughs> and then we can hit review in Lightroom and that'll open up Lightroom again. And you can see in real time, it will start to apply the preset or load the preset. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's doing a pretty good job. Like these ones were a bit dark. Um, it's probably kept this one a little bit too dark, but yeah, overall, this is just a great starting place for me to then go in and tweak. And yeah, some, some of these, like, like this shot, I probably won't do any editing to, which is great. And yeah, it just really speeds up my, my process and um, yeah, takes out those, those smaller tasks that can be time consuming that I really don't need to be, like doesn't necessarily need that human element. So from here, I'll go through and make my own tweaks, make sure I'm happy with everything. Um, but overall, I feel that the AI has done a pretty good job and got it relatively close to where I want these images to be. This workflow works for me as it strikes the balance of allowing me to make final selections and tweaks while reducing the volume and fatigue of tedious tasks. I still have plenty of control and I'm still checking every image, but Aftershoot is taking care of things that are repetitious and less creative. Our style of editing is quite true to life and our editing profile or preset is pretty versatile, so it's not often that an image requires heavy editing. In my experience, Aftershoot is generally choosing images I would choose and is editing the way I would because it continues to learn my preferences. 
There have even been instances where I have edited a handful of previews from a wedding to quickly deliver the next day. Then once I have culled the full wedding and had Aftershoot edit the rest, I can compare my initial edit of the previews with similar shots that Aftershoot has edited. And sometimes I prefer the way Aftershoot has edited the images. Often this comes down to white balance and this is the most common way I am tweaking images that Aftershoot has edited. It can be close and totally acceptable, but in that particular lighting scenario, I may prefer it a little greener or warmer and I can easily make these adjustments. So it's close but not quite there. Aftershoot and many similar platforms are evolving at a crazy speed. New iterations and improvements are coming out all the time, so I'm sure the accuracy and efficiency of the software will only increase. Overall, I feel that Aftershoot doesn't completely replace a human in the post-production workflow, but it does speed up the process, and I for one am happy to spend less time staring at a computer. If this video has piqued your interest and you would like to try Aftershoot for yourself, we've got a link in the description and you can also use the code Trent and Jesse to get 10% off. There's a 30 day trial, so there's no risk in testing it out. Be sure to hit subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this video here where we take you behind the scenes on a bridal fashion photo shoot. We'll see you in the next one.